So iOS and iPadOS 16.2 finally released to everybody to install on their phones and their iPads to try out and see exactly what Apple introduced in terms of new features. And in my opinion, 16.2 is gonna be very similar in terms of what it does, especially for the iPad, to what 13.4 did with cursor support because we got a bunch of new features for both iOS and iPadOS. So without further ado, let's see exactly what Apple's giving us with iPadOS and iOS 16.2 and leave some comments down below throughout the video of what you learned and what your favorite new feature is and which one you're gonna be using the most. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, let's get right into this video with iOS 16.2 and iPadOS 16.2. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how big the actual update was. So if we go up here and zoom in, we're dealing with about 5.2 gigs on iOS and then we have 4.79 gigs for iPadOS. So this is a large update. Make sure you leave at least 10 gigs of open storage on either device in order to get this installed and installed correctly because like I said, there's gonna be a bunch of new features coming in. So you wanna make sure you get it installed with zero issues. So let's jump right into those new features. So the first thing that we're gonna notice, this is going to be for iPhone 14 users or iPhone 14 Pro users specifically. As you see, we do have a 13 Pro Max, so I'm gonna show you guys the best that I can. But if you go into your settings and then go down to display and brightness, you actually have the ability now to change the always on display situation. So a lot of people, when Apple announced their always on display on their 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, they thought that the screen was just far too bright, even when it lowered it to one hertz and lowered the brightness as much as it could. It made people feel like the actual iPhone was still on, even though it wasn't. So Apple finally adopted that new way of actually displaying the always on display, which is what Google has done for forever, which is basically blacking out the entire screen. And now you get two options. You get the option to hide your background and then you get the option to hide your notifications as well. So you can literally just have the time and your widgets and you'll be good to go all in a black and white interface, which most people will have as a welcome addition. But again, that's just for 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max users. And then to stay on the actual lock screen itself, you can see that if I long press on the lock screen and then press customize, we have a couple of new widgets to take into consideration. So if I go into here and we look into the widgets, we actually have two new widgets. The first one is going to be the actual sleep tracker. So if we go down and go into sleep, we now have a few new widgets that we can add to the lock screen to see how your sleep was last night. So if you do wear your Apple Watch to sleep and you do track your sleep, you now get a nice view, which would be great, especially if you have a focus mode that has like a morning focus mode to let you know like, hey, you got seven hours and 42 minutes of strong sleep before you actually woke up. So that's a new widget. And then also you got a new medication widget. So if we go into health, you can now have your medication widget right here. So if you have scheduled medications or you have reminders for your medications, you can put that in your widgets as well. So those are two new widgets that were added with 16.2 that's available to any iPhone that can do the customized lock screen. The next cool feature is actually their new Apple Music Sing or Apple Music Karaoke. As you guys probably know by now, I am a Spotify user, but since I am subscribed to Apple One, I do have access to actual Apple Music. And you can see what this is. So Apple's music application is actually very well known for having a great lyric situation. So they're really good at showing lyrics, being able to follow along with those lyrics. But now with 16.2 on iPhones, iPads, and even with tvOS, you have the ability to have the karaoke feature turned on by default. So if you click on a song, you go down here, you see that the lyrics are right there. So they're actually just about to start playing. So if I wanna fast forward a little bit, you can see that the lyrics are moving along. I am muted for copyright reasons, but you now have this little microphone right here with some stars. So if you click on that microphone, you get a new volume rocker. And what that volume rocker does is allows you to control the vocal volume of, for this song, will be Justin Bieber. So if I turn it all the way up, they're gonna be singing alongside of you. And then if I turn it all the way down, it basically has the instrumental with a very faint vocal in the background, so you can sing along with it. And when you have duets, it'll move the lyrics from side to side. So person A on this side, person B on the right side. So that's a new little feature, which again, is just a welcome addition. No new enhancements to your productivity or to your life, but it's a fun new feature that I know a lot of people this holiday season, especially if you have tvOS or an iPad, because it looks great on a bigger screen, they're gonna be playing around with this a good amount. And then the other really big feature that came to iPadOS and iOS is Freeform. So Freeform was that collaboration software that Apple touted back during WWDC in June, and it took them forever to really get it out. This will be available with macOS Ventura 13.1 as well. So depending on when that releases, you will be able to Freeform and collaborate between all of your macOS devices. But Apple pretty much took everything that works from their personal Notes app and then a bunch of other features from Notes apps in the App Store and pretty much consolidated it into their own application. So you can see if I go into this right here, let's go to open board. It is just a shared vision board basically that you can zoom in and out of. You can see that I've already customized or added a bunch of different stuff in here. You can share amongst your colleagues. You can add people whether they have an iPhone or not. 
you know, you can add post-it notes, you can add shapes if you would like, which is right here. And we do have a full walkthrough of Freeform, and we will also have a Freeform beginner's guide, which should be out relatively soon, which I'll link down below, or will be recommended to you at the end of this video if you guys do wanna check that out. But I did wanna let you guys know that it is available with 16.2, and by default, it should install to all of your iOS devices and iPadOS devices, but if it doesn't, it will be available in the App Store for a free download. It is included in your ownership of iOS and iPadOS. But in my opinion, people are gonna to move to this Freeform app and a lot of App Store applications are gonna be cannibalized in my opinion. We also got some smaller nuance features to take into account. So we now have 5G in India, which is great to have. So if you have a 5G capable iPhone, you are now able to use 5G in India. Apple also added for security purposes into AirDrop a new 10 minute timer. So if you long press over here in your control center and you go to your AirDrop and long press there, before, you could actually turn on AirDrop for everyone, but now it's everyone for 10 minutes. So you have the three options, receiving off, contacts only, and then everyone for 10 minutes. And it was for security purposes because at first people were just sending random images for fun and to make people laugh. But now people were kind of dealing with security issues because if you opened up a certain JPEG or opened up a certain PNG, it could mess with your phone depending on what it was. So that is now a feature that Apple added by default. So if you want to have AirDrop on for everyone, you only get a 10 minute timer. Another big security update was the end-to-end -end encryption that Apple is now doing for their entire iCloud suite. So iMessage has been known to be one of the more secure messaging services pretty much out there because it is fully end-to-end -end encrypted and it has been for a very long time, but now Apple's bringing that to the rest of their iCloud lineup. So think mail, think files, think things like Freeform and the notes application. This is gonna be all end-to-end -end encrypted, which is great news for you, even though, again, a lot of people don't really know what that means. It probably means it's gonna be safer. That's all you really need to, that's all you really need to know is that your stuff is going to be pretty much locked down and much, much more secure when it comes to being vulnerable to any attacks or hacks or anything like that. So that's always a good add-on, which is a big security feature coming from Apple. And then a couple more smaller things to take into consideration, which will be passed down to iPadOS as well, is if you go into your iCloud, Apple announced private relay, is if you go into your iCloud and you go all the way in here, you have obviously your new private relay. Now, private relay is not new. That's been around for a little while now, and it's still technically in beta, I believe. But if you have it turned on, that means that Apple is hiding your IP address from any and all websites. But now if you click on the two A fonts on Safari and you need to actually share your IP address with a certain website for some sort of reason, you can now do that by clicking on the show IP address here and it'll share your IP address for that specific instance in that specific website. And then also, which wasn't really an update that came with 16.2, but is now available to all iPhone 14 users, is Emergency SOS. So Emergency SOS is now available. You get it for free for two years. Apple still has not announced how much it's gonna cost after that fact. But keep in mind that Emergency SOS, if you have an iPhone 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max, will be available if you do get lost, if you are in one of those dire situations where you need to reach out and get that done. But that is all we have from an iOS perspective. Now I wanna move and transition over to iPadOS real quick. So for the most part, everything that I mentioned aside from the always on display will be coming to iPadOS 16.2. That includes a new music karaoke, that includes a freeform application, which I showed you before. So this is the same board that was on over here. It is just also on my iPad and it will also be on my macOS computer. But a couple of specific iPad things that did come out. So with 16.2, Apple will bring back Stage Manager and, and they will include more iPads in this Stage Manager update. So if I pull up Safari and I wanna go into Stage Manager, I click on here and then all of a sudden I'm in this much smaller floating window. I can start grabbing stuff, moving it into this window over here, making this smaller, moving this to the side, bringing in my photos application. So you can see that it works extremely well. It's very, very responsive. I've seen very little, if any bugs, now at this point because we are on the public version, so it better run extremely smoothly. But that is what you're dealing with with Stage Manager. And what's nice is that originally Apple only did this for the M1 iPads, but now Stage Manager works with any iPad Pro, basically, from 2018 and newer. So the A12X, A12Z, the M1, the M2, and then also the M1 iPad Air are included in who can use Stage Manager. So unfortunately, iPad Mini is out, older iPad Airs are out, and then the iPad 10th and 9th generation, none of those will get Stage Manager. And again, we have a full walkthrough of Stage Manager, which I'll link down below if you guys do want to check that out. But I did want to let everybody know that Stage Manager is available for all those iPads. But now let's talk about extended monitor support very briefly and talk about which iPads are included with extended monitor support. So I'm plugging in my M1 iPad Pro. You see that it is charging. It does take a little bit of a second for external display support to come up, but you can see that it's kind of popping up, kind of doing its thing, and then voila, within like five seconds or so, it does turn on. 
And like I said, we, I have a full extended monitor support kind of walkthrough, tutorial, the good, the bad, what can you do, what are the limitations? I'm gonna link that down below. It's a very good video. It goes through literally every little nuance feature about it. I'm just gonna do a quick little overview of secondary monitor support. But you can see that I am using a mouse, an external mouse to control it, but it works exactly like you would want to, right? You have your windows down here that you can grab, slide it up here, then I can enlarge it to actually view what I'm doing. So it is very intuitive and again, External monitor support is only going to be supported by three level iPads, right? You're going to have the M1 iPad Air is going to support it. Then the M1 and the M2 iPad Pros, both in the 11 and the 12 inch variant. So basically, if you have an M1 or M2 powered iPad, you can do this. Every other iPad will not be able to do this. And you can see that I am using a 4K 27 inch monitor, but it works with any size monitor. I've tried it with a 44 inch ultra wide. I've tried it with a smaller monitor that's only 1080p. I've tried it with USB-C, I've tried it with Thunderbolt, I've tried it with HDMI and dongles, and it all works extremely well, and I'm just very happy that Apple can finally say that they have real external monitor support, because again, I can just grab this, move it over, I can pull up my dock, if I just scroll down here, the dock shows up here, I pull up Twitter, it opens up side by side, and again, I just have three to four floating windows using them at the same time, and this is great for video editing, for productivity, for gaming, Word documents, for you name it, it finally works and feels like a computer. So again, if you guys wanna watch a more nuanced, detailed video of extended monitor support on the iPad and everything that goes with that, link down below. But now you know that with 16.2, if you have the correct iPad, you can now fully do this. And it's not buggy whatsoever. It's It finally works how it was intended to. But that's everything with 16.2 on iOS and iPadOS. Let's finish up the video. So that is gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, the name of the game, especially for iOS, was refinement, was feedback, and was overall security, right? Apple got a bunch of feedback with the always on display, and they were able to actually change it in real time to give us exactly what we wanted. They included all that end-to-end -end encryption for their entire iCloud services suite. And again, they were just refining everything else for iPhone 14 and iPhone 13 users with 16.2. And then on the iPadOS side, we got Freeform, which is also on iOS and macOS, but Freeform, on the iPad is going to be how I'm gonna be using it the most. And then also for M1 and M2 powered iPads, we got extended monitor support, and extended monitor support that works extremely well and not something that's very buggy and broken and needs to be worked on continuously. Extended monitor support on the iPad officially, in my opinion, especially for a lot of workflows, has turned the iPad into a computer. Between that, cursor support, the magic keyboard, external monitor support, floating windows, stage manager, I know it's a little bit different than what people are used to on the desktop and Mac OS side and Windows side, but it's a computer in its own right, everybody. But leave a comment down below what you guys think about 16.2. What's your favorite feature? What are you gonna try out first? What are you excited for the most? Do you have an iPad that's capable of this? Are you a little bit annoyed that you can't get extended monitor support on a non-M1 iPad? I know that I am, even though I have an M1 iPad Pro. I wish a lot more people had the capability to use it but Apple is going to Apple and they're gonna probably restrict more things as time goes on. But that's gonna do it everybody. If you guys wanna watch more iPadOS, iOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here because we do have a free form beginner's guide on the channel as well as an extended monitor support guide if you guys wanna check those out. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.